everybody, a quick one today. This is just about table styles and just a good way to go into Friday with some good guidelines for better, cleaner tables. Now, in general, you all know me, I talk a lot about not putting too much data in front of people, not having overwhelming tables with tons and tons of information as your primary means of communication. It can be supporting information and it's fine to include it in your worksheets, in your workbooks, or even on your page, but it shouldn't be the primary focus. Instead, most of the time, we should be extracting insights using visuals, presenting nice, clean, crisp, concise stuff right up at the top of the page first. Now, I know you still have to use tables sometimes. I live in reality. I have many, many clients of all different types. And guess what? At every single organization, people still have to use tables. So this is my basic guideline for just being a little bit more effective with how you present those tables, right? This isn't necessarily how you need to work with them if you're actually using them for data processing. Do your own thing, do you. But when you present them to other people, this is the guideline. So basic premise here, simplify, simplify, simplify. So we are going to start by only showing data that is necessary data that is necessary, not just in general for the report, but for communicating the actual insight that you're trying to communicate. So we're trimming things down as much as we can and not showing stuff that doesn't need to be there. Then once you got that and you got that core data, you're gonna get any unnecessary grid lines out of there, any unnecessary alternating colors and weird formatting and bold text, you're gonna get rid of all of that. You're then gonna go and you're gonna left align and keep that over on the left and you're gonna right align your dates, metrics, etc., and put those on the right side of the page. Resize everything, make sure it fits, make sure it's clean. If you have categories that are repeated over and over again, delete the repeating ones, just put them in once. Use white space to separate things out so that things are easy to read and easy to interpret, particularly between categories like this. And for the most part, trim this down to the point with which you can highlight an insight and it's gonna be obvious to a person what that insight actually is. That's where you need to start. Typical table, the kind of stuff I see from a lot of my clients is using these default styles like this one. This is, isn't good communication. It might be great to work with, it might be fine for that, but it's not good for communicating something to an audience unless that audience is another analyst maybe, or another data scientist. So once you've stripped it all down and gotten it to the core insight, then you can come back in and if you need to add additional styles, if you need to add additional colors to make it easier to read, if you need to add some, some borders on the outside in specific areas to make it easier to interpret whatever insight you're trying to communicate, that's okay. But only, and I mean only add them if they serve that purpose of making it easier for your audience to understand what you're trying to communicate to them. In general, <laughs> And again, I know there's people who are gonna get mad when I say this, but in general, most audiences really need less data and we need to be really careful about presenting extraneous data. You need to do the analysis for them for the most part, and you need to present the insights from that analysis for them. And this, there's a lot of things behind this, but a big one is that our brains just can't interpret huge amounts of information presented to us at one time. And more importantly, your audience doesn't have the context you have about that information, so they wouldn't even know how to interpret it even if they could. And look, I understand there might be times when your audience wants more data and they want you to just show everything. And if that's your situation, that's fine, right? And look, the ultimate measure of what we put into our reports and how we communicate it is our audience. So like I said before, if your audience is an analyst, <laughs> if it's a data scientist, if it's anyone that just wants all the data, that's okay, right? We're not saying that there's just one right way to do this. We're talking about the majority of cases. And in most of them, you are not communicating to folks that are other data pros, they're just regular people. And in those cases, we need to simplify. So just the quick example here. Table, very comprehensive, lots of data, totally unclear. It's unstructured, it's unorganized. We have no idea to how to figure out what the heck this is trying to tell us, right? But if we pull the insight out, right? Hey, here's our top performer. That's what we care about here. And we break the rest of the data down with some with some visuals, particularly if it's important for people to understand the performance across the two different categories we have here. And we highlight the main important insight. All of a sudden we have something that's easier to interpret, a lot more clear, and it's just overall a massive improvement. That table doesn't even need to be in there at all, really shouldn't be for top level insights. 
it is secondary. If you need to include the table, that's fine. Put it lower on the page. It's no big deal, but the core insight always needs to be right up at the top and it needs to be the main focus of whatever you're presenting. I hope that helps. Have a lovely Friday. Have a lovely weekend. I hope I didn't upset anyone too much with my sort of contentious table uh, perspective here. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye for now.